hello and welcome to today's video we are going to be looking at common test and exam questions on gamma and beta function so we're going to solve a couple of problems in these tutorials and let's quickly dive in so in problem one we want to evaluate this integral from 0 to pi over 2 we now have roots tan theta d theta so how do you solve this problem solution to solve this problem you need to um, recall that the beta of m comma n is still expressed in trigonometric form is that okay like this two integral from 0 to pi over 2 and we now have sine 2m minus 1 theta cos 2m cos 2n minus 1 theta d theta so this is an um, equivalent representation of the beta function of m comma n and if there's a way we can transform this um, question over here to this form then we are good to go so this is how i'm going to do it so i'm going to say i is equal to integral from 0 to pi over 2 then you now have square root of tan theta d theta so i remember that tan theta is the ratio of sine theta to cos theta so if i substitute it into this bracket i becomes integral from zero to pi over two is square root of sine theta over cos theta d theta this is still equivalent to zero to pi over two then sine 1 over 2 theta cos 1 over 2 theta by law of indices so d theta so again by law of indices it is still equivalent to what pi over 2 then we have sine 1 over 2 theta then cos negative 1 over 2 theta d theta so by law of indices so i is still equivalent to 1 over 2 dot 2 integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine half theta cos negative half theta d theta so this is equation one now if you observe equation one and compare with beta of m comma n equal to two integral from zero to pi over two sine two m minus one theta cos two n minus one theta d theta you will agree with me that the whole of this part here is actually looking like this so let's compare from these comparisons we'll discover that 2m minus 1 over here corresponds to this guy over here which is 1 over 2 therefore m is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 divided by 2 which is going to give me a 3 over 4 if you solve it um, very well secondly you can also agree with me that here and here are equivalent to each other by making that comparison so you have 2n minus 1 is equal to minus 1 over 2 so therefore your n is going to be 1 minus 1 over 2 divided by 2 which is going to give me a 1 over 4 so we've gotten the values of our m and n so our i can be transformed into 1 over 2 beta of what beta of 3 over 4 1 over 4 is that okay 1 over 2 beta of 3 over 4 1 over 4 so if you remember the relationship between beta and gamma functions it's still gamma of m gamma of n divided by gamma of m plus n so we have 1 over 2 dots this will be gamma of 3 over 4 gamma of 1 over 4 divided by gamma of 3 over 4 plus 1 over 4 okay so this evaluates to 1 over 2 so we have gamma of 3 over 4 gamma of 1 over 4 divided by gamma of 3 plus 1 is 4 and 4 divided by 4 is 1 
is that okay so um if we have it like this we are now going to have one over two gamma of three over four gamma of one over four and gamma of one is still one so the question is what is gamma of three over four and gamma of one over four so gamma of three over four and one over four does not really have um a numerical way of or a numerical formula to evaluate them but scientifically we can determine them from the respective graphs okay so from the graph of the gamma and beta functions some values have already been determined for quarter fractions okay for quarter integers like three over four and one over four and we are going to use tables to determine gamma of three over four and gamma of one over four so gamma of one over four from the tables and gamma of three over four i'm going to show you the tables shortly here's the tables so if you look very carefully at this table you will discover that one over four is a 0 0.25 and three over four is a 0 0.75 so gamma of one over four which is 0 0.25 is 3.6256 while gamma of 0 0.75 is 1.2254 So with this, we can now use these values that we've gotten from our tables here to evaluate the value of i. Now, um, in case you don't have access to these tables, you can find it on um, K. Stroud, Engineering Max Mathematics. Um, he treated the topic beta and gamma functions, and this table was gotten from frame 24 of the beta and gamma functions in K. Stroud, Advanced Engineering Mathematics so you can actually make reference to this table or you can save a screenshot of this table so that you can have access to these values but don't worry in exam scenarios they will provide you with the values of um gamma's um, functions that you may encounter when you solve an integral so i is now going to be one over two according to the formula gamma three over four gamma one over four divided by one which is um, one over two then we now have um, 3.6256 times 1.2254. Okay, so let's um, point this on the calculator. So we have 3.6256 times 1.2254 divided by 2. So this is what we get um, after solving this. Um, we get 2.2214 as the value of i approximately. So this brings us to the end of this integral and we solved it using um, gamma and beta functions. Precisely we transformed the integral to take the shape of a better integral or a better function okay from what we know about trigonometry and trigonometry ratios then we did the conversion applied the law of indices and see this move that i did over here you might be wondering why because i needed to include a two in the front of this one this two is part of the better functions but if you look at at this point there is no two there so i introduced the two and i introduced the one over two to neutralize the effect of introducing these two here so that i can now apply the beta function to this whole part here taking this one as a value that will give me m and taking this one as a value that will give me n okay and you just have to use your tables to finish it up at the end of the day so um, that brings us to the end of this problem so wrap and tighten up your belts for another problem okay guys so here we are at problem two so to solve this particular integral 
this is how you are going to do it so you're going to see i is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 and x raised to the power of 5 then you now have 2 minus x raised to the power of 4 dx so if you observe this integral very well it looks like the um, classical definition of the better function or the better integral we have 0 to 1 x to the n minus 1 1 minus x to the n minus 1 dx now looking at this um, integrals carefully they almost look alike okay it's just that there's a 1 here and there's a 2 here so we need to find a way to fix this problem so this is how we're going to go about it so i is integral from 0 to 2 and x to the 5 I'm now going to factor these two out so this is how I'm factoring it out 2 into so 2 into 2 is 1 and 2 into x is an x over 2 then you now have your 4 over here the x so if you apply the law of indices so you have integral from 0 to 2 and you now have um, x to the 5 and you have a 2 raised to the power of 4 and a 1 minus x over 2 raised to the power of 4 dx from this point okay the law of indices says that when two terms are sharing a power okay in a product you can actually split it a to the 4 and b to the 4 so that's what i did to these two here and to this one over here like this so the 2 raised to the power of 4 is a constant that can be taken out from the integral so you have 2 raised to the power of 4 integral from 0 to 2 x to the 5 1 minus x over 2 to the 4 dx okay so now this is looking like this but there is still a problem i'm seeing an x here and i'm seeing an x over 2 here so i need to find a way to fix that problem and i'm going to do that right away so i'm just going to copy this Control c and i'm going to go to a new slide so i'll paste and i'll drag it over here so previously we had this so previously we had i is equal to this value over here so um we're going to see and remember our beta of m comma n is integral from 0 to 1 and x to the m minus 1 and 1 minus x to the n minus 1 dx is that okay so i want to look for a way to make this integral look like this so let's say put um c to be x divided by 2 so whenever you're making a substitution remember the rules your variable of integration will change okay and your boundary values will also change so when you differentiate the c is equal to 1 over 2 dx in this case or dx is equal to what 2 dt is that okay when you make dx the subject of the formula so the boundaries will change like this so we are given that t is equal to x over 2 that means when x is equal to 0 at this point t will be 0 over 2 which is 0 so when x is equal to 2 up here then t will be 2 divided by 2 which is 1 so x varies from 0 to 2 but the variable t will vary from 0 to 1 so our i will become 2 to the 4 and we now have integral from 0 to 1 so making x the subject of the formula x is equal to 2t okay from this form so x is 2t raised to the power of 5 then you have 1 minus instead of x over 2 we have t raised to the power of 4 and instead of dx we have what 2dt okay so this is the integral transformation according to this form so we simplify i as 2 to the 4 then 0 to 1 so we have what 2 to the 5 then c to the 5 according to that law of indices then 1 minus c to the 4 then 2 and we now have dt are we together so you have i is equal to remove all the constants i have 2 to the 4 2 to the 5 and 2 to the 1 then 0 to 1 you have t to the 5 
and one minus t to the four dt. So you are going to agree with me that I will be this is two to the ten, and you now have the integral from zero to one, and you now have t to the five one minus t to the four dt. Are we all good? So having it like this. It's very much comparable to the beta of m comma n, where we have integral from 0 to 1 x raised to the power of m minus 1 and 1 minus x raised to the n minus 1 dx. So I told you that this variable x could be any letter at all. It could even be t, it could be u, it could be v, w, x, y, any letter you want. As far as it takes this pattern, you understand, it is still a better function and this is a better function so m minus 1 in this case is equal to 5 and n minus 1 is equal to 4 in this case when we compare this and this so the implication is that m is a 6 and n is a 5 so at the end of the day we have i is equal to what um, 2 to the power of 10 and we now have what beta of 6 comma 5 are we good when we solve for that, we'll have 2 to the power of 10. And I'll have um, gamma of what? 6 multiplied by gamma of 5 divided by gamma of what? 6 plus 5. Okay, so I will be um, 2 to the power of 10. And you now have your gamma of 6 as 5 factorial. Gamma of 5 as 4 factorial all over gamma of 6 plus 5 is 11 and 11 minus 1 is 10 factorial so you have 10 factorial so remember a gamma of 6 plus 5 is still gamma of what 11 which is a 10 factorial that's why i have it like this so this is 5 factorial this is 4 factorial so when we simplify this we should um, get the answer to our question so if you punch this with your calculator, you're going to get that i is equal to 256 divided by 315 and this evaluates to 0 0.8126 or 27 um, by the way. So um, this is the value of this particular problem. So we're going to look at another problem. So here we are at problem 3. So to solve problem 3, we have i is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 over 2 x raised to the power of 4 1 minus 2 x raised to the power of 3 dx. So remember it looks like the beta of m comma n and this is the definition 0 to 1. So let me use another little v to the m minus 1 1 minus v to the n minus 1 dv so i'm just trying to be flexible with my choice of the variable it can be anything that you want it to be even if you want to use a greek symbol <laughs> yeah okay um like theta but theta or lambda or gamma or anything you could just be flexible with any variable that you want to use even if you want to use a name as if you're strong enough to use a name now um let's um, proceed with this integral in this way we compare it with our canonical beta function okay and we see that this 2x is supposed to be having just um, the dependent variable and no constant multiple of it so we see let's um, let v be um, 2x so you know the drills of course changing the variable of integration and changing the boundary values so let me start with the boundary if v is equal to 2x when x is 0 v is 0 as you can see when you slot in 0 here you have 2 times 0 giving you 0 but when x is 1 over 2 v will evaluate to 2 times 1 over 2 and that is 1 
so while in the x um, domain we are integrating from 0 to 1 over 2 in the v domain we will be integrating from 0 to 1 which is satisfactory of what our beta um, function should integrate across so we also need to change the variable of integration or we can make x the subject of the formula first so x is going to be what 1 all over 2 v then if x is 1 over 2 v let me get the x the x is actually 1 over 2 dv is that okay so i can change the integral in this form so it will be 0 to 1 so x to the 4 becomes according to this place 1 all over 2 v to the 4 then you now have 1 minus 2x becomes v itself then you have to the 3 and the x becomes 1 over 2 dv is that okay so our uh, i is now going to be what 1 all over 2 dot removing this 1 over 2 you now have integral from 0 to 1 and you now have 1 all over 2 raised to the power of 4 then v raised to the power of 4 according to the law of indices and you now have 1 minus v 3 dv so which law of indices a b raised to the power of n is a to the n b to the n so that's what is happening here if you observe 1 over 2 v to the 4 will be 1 over 2 all raised to the power of 4 and v all raised to the 4 so that's how i translated this to this so you have i as uh, 1 over 2 integral okay before i do that let's bring out the constant so 1 over 2 then 1 over 2 all raised to the power of 4 is that okay so you have integral from 0 to 1 v to the 4 and 1 minus v to the 3 dv so careful consideration this is indices so this is 1 over 2 raised to the power of 5 then you have um, an integral that can be expressed in this form 4 is 5 minus 1 and 1 minus v 3 is 4 minus 1 dv so if we compare this with the d of m comma n which is the integral from 0 to 1 you have v to the what m minus 1 and 1 minus v to the n minus 1 dv you will discover that the positions of m and n are clearly seen m will be 5 and n will be 4 is that okay so my i is 1 all over 2 power to the power of 5 then we have the beta of 5 comma 4 so let's go ahead to resolve this this is 1 over 2 to the 5 is 1 over 2 to the 5 like this according to indices a over b raised to the power of n is a to the n divided by b to the n so 1 over 2 raised to the power of 5 is 1 to the 5 divided by 2 to the 5 which is 1 over 2 to the 5 which is 1 over 32 because 2 to the 5 is 1 over 32 so we have 1 over 2 to the 5 then beta of 5 comma 4 becomes gamma of 5 times gamma of 4 divided by gamma of 5 plus 4 so if we keep solving we have i to be 1 over 2 raised to the power of 5 so gamma of 5 gamma of 4 all over what gamma of 9 and this is 1 all over 32 multiplied by we have gamma of 5 to be 4 factorial gamma of 4 to be 3 factorial divided by gamma of um, 9 to be 8 factorial so we now have um, i to be 1 all over 32 multiplied by 4 factorial 3 factorial divided by 8 factorial so we are just going to use um, just going to use our calculator to punch it out and see what it gives us so after punching on the calculator i have 1 all over 8960 which is a 0 0.0001111 one six approximately so um this is about the third problem so we are going to solve um, one more problem and uh, I will give you one to see if you can do by yourself. 
So let's solve the last problem. Okay guys, this is um, problem 4 and we want to resolve this integral. So solution. So to solve this integral, we said i is 0 to 1 over root 2, then x squared and root 1 minus 2x squared, right, dx. So I'm guessing um, this is my beta of m comma n, 0, 1, so I have y to the m minus 1 and 1 minus y to the n minus 1. Device. So you can see I'm flexible with my choices of variables here. You can be flexible with your choices too. It doesn't always have to be x all the time. The most important thing is not the variables but the structure of the function. The structure of the function is more important than the variables that you use. Is that okay? So um, I'm going to ask you at this point to pause the video and see if you could resolve this. So in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, let's go. I figured out you have paused the video and you have solved so let's compare our answers so I figured out that the first thing you did was to make a um, a change to the nature of the function like this so you have x squared then 1 minus 2 x squared to the what 1 over 2 so what does this look like okay we're making progress yet so this looks like this one and the only thing that is different is that we have a 2x squared here why in this place we just have one variable the independent variable with a power of one so let's change this independent variable in this case so we can say um let's uh um let's y be let's y be what uh 2x squared so of course let's see how this impacts our boundary values so when y or when x so we have y is equal to 2x squared when x is equal to 0 here then y will definitely be 2 times 0 squared which is 0 but when x is equal to 1 over root 2 here so our y will be 2 into 1 over root 2 squared which is 2 into 1 over 2 uh, which is 1 okay so x is integrating um, from 0 to 1 over root 2 but in the y domain we are going from 0 to 1 which is confirming to our better function over here so um, you have that your x okay if you make x the subject of the formula you will get um, y all over 2 that's the square root of y over 2 which is the same thing as root y all over what? root 2. Is that okay? So when you make x the subject of the formula, you're going to have what? Um, x as root y over root 2. Or someone else could have just said um, x squared is equal to y over 2, and someone would have left it there. So what we want to do is we want to now differentiate, changing the variable of the what integration. So we have y is equal to 2x squared. So dy is equal to what? Um, 4x dx. Is that okay? dy is 4x dx. In other words, dx is actually 1 all over 4x dy. So we already found the value of x as root y over root 2 so in other words this is still the same thing as 1 all over we have 4 instead of x you have root y all over root 2 so you have dy so by the law of fractions this will translate to root 2 all over 4 root y dy so as the value of dx is that okay so we slot everything into the integral so in slotting everything into the integral we now have um, i is our changes have been made so we are translating from the x domain to the y domain so you have an integral from 0 to 1 according to what we calculated here so instead of x squared we already found a value for x squared which is y over 2 so you have um, y over 2 so this is the convention i'm following i'm following everything here so x squared 
is y over 2 then 1 minus 2x squared 2x squared is y itself so you have 1 minus y raised to the power of so okay 1 minus y raised to the power of um, 1 over 2 1 over 2 then dx dx is root 2 all over 4 root y dy okay so this is our equivalent transformation of the problem so we are now going to take out all the constants like this so i is equal to i'll take out this one over two from the bottom of y and i'll take out root two over four so i'll be left with um i have zero to one then i have um y divided by root y then you now have one minus y raised to the power of one over two dy so if you have it like this, the next thing you want to do is i is equal to you have root 2 all over 8, then integral from 0 to 1. So, evaluating this one using indices, I have y to the 1 minus 1 over 2. Of course, you know why that is like that because y over root y is still the same thing as y to the 1 divided by y to the 1 over 2 which is y to the 1 minus 1 over 2 by law of indices so we have 1 minus y here's to the power of 1 over 2 dy okay so we have i is equal to root 2 all over 8 then integral from 0 to 1 so you have y to the what 1 over 2 and 1 minus y to the 1 over 2 dy so at this point we are ready to compare with our beta of m comma n which is an integral from 0 to 1 we have y to the m minus 1 1 minus y to the n minus 1 dy so comparing this you discover that m minus 1 is equal to what 1 over 2 therefore m is equal to what 1 plus 1 over 2 and this is a 3 over 2 similarly comparing this with this you will discover that n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 2 therefore n is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 and we have a 3 over 2 so m and n have the same values this means that our i is root 2 over 8 beta of 3 over 2 comma 3 over 2 is that okay so this is root 2 over 8 we have um, beta of 3 over 2 is gamma of 3 over 2 times gamma of 3 over 2 divided by gamma of 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 okay so this is i is equal to root 2 over 8 so we have gamma of 3 over 2 gamma of 3 over 2 divided by gamma of what 3 because 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 gives you 3 is that okay now if you um, look at your tables for um, gamma and beta functions you you know that 3 over 2 is solvable the gamma of 3 over 2 is solvable so we remember that the gamma of 3 over 2 is root pi over 2 so if you don't know how i got this value then you should actually refer to my videos on gamma of um positive half integer you know how i got that gamma of 3 over 2 is what root pi over 2 so um another one you want to remember is that gamma of 3 is 2 factorial which is a 2 times 1 which is still a 2 so we have that i is equal to root 2 all over 8 then gamma of um, 3 over 2 is root pi over 2 then we have another root pi over 2 and divided by what we have 2 so if you evaluate this you get root 2 over 16 then 2 over 16 then this evaluates to um, pi all over pi over 4 if i'm not mistaken because root pi times root pi is pi and 2 times 2 is 4 so we have um, pi root 2 all over um, 64 as the answer to this um, particular case so we can use our calculator to um, punch 
and evaluate what the final answer is going to be. Someone can actually leave the answer in this form, okay? Someone can decide to rationalize, okay? That's by rationalizing, you have root 2 all over 64 times root 2 all over root 2, which gives me what? Pi dot 2 all over 64 root 2, which gives me a pi all over 32 root 2. And all we're just trying to say is that I evaluate to 0 0.06942. So this is the value of i for this particular problem over here. So I'm going to leave you with a problem to resolve as we've come to the end of our videos. And the problem I'm leaving you with is solve. So um, let me see homework. Solve this integral, integral from 0 to 1 as i is equal to integral from 0 to 1 then you have um, x raised to the power of 4 then square root of 1 minus x squared dx so solve it and drop your answers in the comment section and i will create a video that will provide the solution to this problem so thank you very much once again for watching and i hope you learned a lot don't forget to like the video please like like hit the like button like right now right now right now and subscribe to this channel and share to your friends and um i hope to see you in the next video so till then stay blessed bye